Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makana Man at YouTube with another model video. With the amazing feedback from my needle nozzle video, I came across this amazing listing on AliExpress from Nazzle. Aftermarket airbrush cover caps, also known as needle cap, crown, distance diffuser. And besides the cutout tomahawk, there's a bunch of different shapes for a wide spray or a focus point lots of potential and it's as easy to install as removing the needle cover then screwing off the cap off the cover then choosing and applying the new cap that you desire excited i googled on their effects and any feedback or review coming up with not i wasn't to know how good they were were they worthwhile do they actually work and do they fit on any airbrushes besides this individual brand or even how to test and write a review to make the majority of the internet happy. Uh, most airbrush opinions and tutorials are very controversial. This has been a year in the process. I'm sticking to the three needle and nozzle models. Point two for a cheap Chinese hyacinth. Point three for a Japanese manufactured Iwata common airbrush. Point five on the unorthodox Ophir premium Chinese airbrush. And I bought the whole lot, two tomahawks, one fun funneled in for detail and funneled out for smooth gradients, a open ring for close fine gradient lines and shading, a funnel cap out and in with holes for extra smoothness in gradients, a U shape for pushing against the surface and creating pencil thin lines, standard in funnel for narrower patterns and finer lines. At first glance looks just like any other airbrush cover cap but the right is your standard spray out funnel which you'll find on all airbrushes excluding tomahawk ends which are also funnels out. The left is the special one that funnels inwards. Also consider jet blowback. Seal the end and you can blow air through the paint or thinner mixture in the cup. Cutouts, you cannot easily do it with your finger. Pulling the needle back and sticking a Q-tip, you can. Needle damage can occur. Misconception, I believe cutouts would prevent dry tip, build up a paint in the cap. Wrong, the paint can still build up if the tip of the needle is bent or a tear in the nozzle, but instead of collecting in the cup, it may immediately be thrown upon the surface or model splattering earlier. Cheap, nothing special, $20, $30 airbrush. Same as 90% of models you'll find in the wild. Fine enough line. Shading has a large gradient, lots of oversprays. Intense coverage leading to paper bleed in one pass. With the double up of patterns, we will do a wide spray first. Each crown is going to have a fine line and a large gradient shade line pulling the trigger all the way back. Immediately, a lot less overspray and narrow is a lot easier to control with the lines. The ring, regardless of funneling out, super intense. Very small overspray and gradient, very fine line. The funnels, out and in, were not a disappointment and both very intense, very fine, very little overspray. My preference is leaning for the inner funnels for everything in the amount of control and smoothness. With my bias of cheap airbrushes, liking it quite a bit. As expected, the U produced a very nice fine line and the spray was very, very balanced gradient. Last, standard in funnel, keeps everything together. Very intense, a nice clean one pass, standard overspray. I enjoyed this quite a bit, but at point two for general workhorse and colouring in or coating, it's very intense with not much chance of dust coat or light spraying. With good maintenance and control, I can already get past a lot of these advantages using a standard tip. It doesn't look too much on paperwork besides the lessing of overspray if you don't do a lot of masking and like freehand work. Overall for this intensity it's a nice luxury but not overall essential to spraying. A few hot spot tips I would avoid for this needle and nozzle combo. The Iwata made Procon Boy usually comes with a tomahawk cap, but I've swapped it with a standard one just to show its usual performance. 
Nice airbrush, but again, nothing special with a lot of overspray. Restoring the original Tomahawk cap, hysterically, I didn't seat the needle properly nor adjust the cap, creating two streams. With adjustments, this is this airbrush standard flow and line, which is very, very fine. Going into the in funnel, it's very similar, but quite intense with very little overspray and short gradient. Unlike the point two model, the distribution of paint load was a lot more even with a more spread and nicer gradient. Again, limiting or completely masking out the overspray. The advantages and difference of each cutout and funnel type is far more noticeable with the point three. The control is really apparent and makes the two fine lines to large spray shading a lot easier to perform. I can find a lot of advantages from dust coating to camouflage and colouring in a lot easier. Again, and this is the bias of someone who paints a lot of very small surfaces, the finer inner funnels have been the most useful to me, especially the one with the holes and the U-shape fine liner. With this test, I could see an immediate change to my spraying and painting habits in utilising these caps a lot more. The lack of concentrate bleed and even coats in each of the lines also show that this is is the appropriate needle nozzle size for experimentation and heavy use of these caps. Lucky last, my favorite airbrush and needle nozzle combo, the Ophir 0.5 mil. Sadly, something wasn't quite right. It'll take a few months of tests and this video to find the underlining issue. Like social media and general hobby misinformation, until well understood and thoroughly researched and tested, uh, my own biases and assumptions can be shocking and amusingly bad and make my enjoyment as well as progress in the hobby is suffer or slow down. Much like point two, there was problems and advantages. Downside, hot spots being so heavy it soaked into the paper with poor distribution. Advantages, and this is a really big one, overspray being drastically reduced, making the hot spots easier with spray style pressure and distance. More importantly with this film session, to address the giant elephant in the room, this horrendous and terrible splattering in between the really nice gradients and lines. I love the Ophir airbrush as it has this massive and very thick walled brass nozzle that doesn't split. What I should have learnt from 3D printing is it's going to wear out, widen and reach to a point where so much paint escapes it's going to splatter and not atomize correctly as it's done. To my luck, the part has just reached recently been made available on AliExpress and was easy fix. The change of part made no difference whatsoever, it's just really smoothed out that terrible splattering. The results are still pretty good. We cannot call this a complete and concluded review without trial by fire. My first test where it all started, had trouble and managed to fix it, is filler primer in the Ophir 0.5 mil. The tomahawk, the ring and the open funnel with holes in it is all ideal for airflow and getting less overspray and more even coat of paint throughout and spraying over a large surface in priming or filling base coating but you only really need one and my preference is the open funnel with air holes. If you're doing artwork, maybe ink, spraying paper, fabric, the ring is going to do even finer work. But for paint, that's all you really need. A tomahawk is a very flexible multi-use piece. If I was to choose my favorite cap or restrict it to one as a total workhorse and do my majority of shading, painting and base coating, it would be the inner funnel with holes. It's occurred to me that I like to work slower and do multiple passes to build up and have a steady gradient shade or a steady 
steady colour rather than spray and have total coverage in one or two passes. So the open funnels is something I'm going to distance myself away from and stick to these inner funnels more often in saving paint and being more focused on the surface. It's fantastic, so much less stressful and so much easier to shade and pick out little areas. I can't wait to use this on some garage kits and flesh tones on character figures. In this shot I'm using a 0.3 mil airbrush. My normal spot style and approach is lacquer paints due to ease of atomization, low PSI with a very high thinning and viscosity, 0.5 or 0.3 mil and I'll rock the trigger to get the spray pattern that I desire. This gives me even more control in the spray pattern and the blend of the gradient. The second cap I'm most likely to use very regularly out of this collection and highly recommend would be the U-shape for even finer lines and controlling. This is for any strategic or very tight shading, colouring in of small points and most importantly camouflage. Doubling up like the ring one, it's also really good for pulling back and having a open very wide pattern spray for priming or dust and base coating. Reviewing our findings, these airbrush cover caps or crowns, one most definitely work pretty well, two seem to fit on the thread of a massive catalogue and range of airbrushes, mostly focusing on generics that are based off the Iwata, Olympic and Hysing models. Hatter and Sternback and Sparmax will also not be an issue. Pache and Badger seems to have its own own thread propriety system and layout and I am highly doubtful that it will actually even be within the same low out or design. With cutouts and extra airflow we've definitely seen a massive reduction in overspray. Patterns intensity and ease of use depends on the different designs in regards of the different needles and nozzles that are being applied. Massive disclaimer airbrushing and atomization has a wide variety of conditions and settings from mediums and paints to pressures and atmospheres your results may not be the same nor experiences this is just my style in conclusion I think they're very worthwhile and intend to use them in my regular painting and usage plus recommendations from now on. This video was really tough to edit and write. I hope it has been informative and helpful, if not at least interesting. Thank you very much for watching and as always until next time, stay tuned for further content and we'll catch you guys later. See ya!